So hello and welcome to this week's angling blog. This week you join me back out in search of roach on the waggler. An excellent session last week and I'll put a link to the top of the screen now. But we're back out today, wading out in the middle of the reservoir and hopefully we're going to get some roach on the waggler. You see Mr Swan's found us already. He's brought his family along to visit. A few fish topping close in which bodes well for the session. Just wading out just to get into enough water so we can cast into that shadow and hopefully we can catch a few roach. It is the shallow end of the lake. I've seen Mr Carp about, but on a Sunday morning, what a beautiful view. So here we are out on the water, got the landing net, a bait waiter, another bank stick behind for the landing net, which to be honest with you, when you're out in the water, it's only if we hit something big like a tench. Most of the roach I'll be bringing to hand. It's almost as good as being on the river, almost. So you can see there where the roach are topping and that is the benefit of wading out. You've got a short cast here to this dark shadow and that dark shadow there is where I'm hoping to get my bites. As you can see there, it does deepen out quite a bit. So you've always got to be careful when you're wading out, but just a short cast there and hopefully we can get a good net of fish today a quick look at the side tray we've got lots of hinders hemp which i boiled up last night and i've got some behind me as well if you watch last week's blog you'll understand just how much bait you've got to put in to draw them fish in there's carp anglers on the wall there's three the other side of that bush there's one over there there's a couple over there they're all putting bait in and the roach eat the bait they nip away at the boilies they nip away at the particle they put in so you've got to draw them fish in and you've got to be really positive lots of corn and red maggot rod wise it's the first session out today with my amiga float rod in 13 foot it come in the week and i've been dying to get out on it for mr roach and i can't wait to get out on the river for barbel as well if it's anything like the glide It'll be good for everything, and I'm hoping so. I've got a two gram busy wag in the end. But no shot till I get down to a tiny size six, thins more weight, a short hook link down to a size 12 hook. Before we do make a start, I am going to do my best today. Obviously, I'm out in the water, there is only me, and hopefully, we'll get a few bites. So, I'm going to be really positive with me feeding, but I'm not going to go too far out. Obviously, I've waded out quite a bit, and that's the whole point that you don't have to go as far with the cast i'm gonna be really positive with the hemp into that shadow put a bit of corn in i'm gonna start off nice and positive on corn and there we go there's the first proper bite of the day since we had that one when we were setting up on corn so that's a good sign the beauty of being in the water you can just bring the fish to hand How about that for the first bite on the new rod absolutely beautiful that orange eye and a palm full of roach and an excellent stamp so one thing you have got to be really positive so i'm feeding quite heavy with the hemp get every cast putting bait in there we go an excellent start really to be getting bites so quickly and I remember rightly doing this we did always hit mr carp but hopefully he leaves us alone i think we'll be saying it a few times today but what a lovely roach that is Nice and plump in the morning sun. There we go, there's another one. So just waiting a little bit longer than I did Woody. When you wait a bit for the bite, when you're doing this, you'd always think whether the tench or a carp's moved in. And as always, excellent quality. One thing you do have to get used to is kind of looking down and feeding with a catapult <laughs> and striking at the same time. And I guess Trotting a river does help you with that. How many times do you throw bait in and you strike at the same time? Really enjoying getting back out on this venue. As you can see, the second week we've been on it. Absolutely beautiful fishing. And the key to it is to keep that bait going in. Keeping that noise on the water and that attraction going in. What you're trying to do is keep the fish that are in the swim, in the swim and keep attracting, you know, new roach in all the time. There we go. You see there, the 
fish are coming in at all stages we're getting ones a bit further out but we're getting them on the edge of that shadow as well now the sun just glistening off that roach it's just beautiful to be out here on a sunday morning and who wouldn't be an angler eh this is why i use the power rods for me roach and dace fishing because when you hit things like chub and we've hooked into something a bit bigger than a roach here i think you've got that bit of backbone i've gone a little bit quiet I'm just going to take my time, I've got a feeling it's going to be Mr Tench. And like I just said, the reason why I use the power rods for the roach in the days is when you hit better fish like this, you've got that bit of backbone and that's the first proper test for it. We've been catching a few roach and that's not a bad tench, is it? And the early alarm clock this morning, well worth it with that lovely five pound male tench. What a lovely, lovely tench to catch on the float rod. Just having a few of those roach, wasn't we? Went a bit quiet, and you always know it's even Mr. Carp. And on here, it looks like Mr. Tench. Let's get this lovely fish straight back. And let's let him go. Off he goes. Let's get back out there. really can't argue with it can you blue skies and a roach on the end just coming over to corn now did change over to maggot a little bit just to get a few bites and had a few perch one thing i do always say to people who contact the page make sure you enjoy things while they're good because one thing i've learned over the years nothing lasts forever and when you are out on big natural venues like this conditions can really change really quickly We've had a side wind going over there. You see out there again, Mr. Heaven actually sat in the water. <laughs> it's bad. And now the wind's actually coming at us, which is nice, really. Nice cooling breeze. Like we've all fishing, if you're willing to put the effort in, you can get the rewards. And by keeping that bait going in when the shoal does arrive back, you can really make it count by just keeping that shoal in the swim for as long as possible. Because when you think about it, as anglers, we only catch a small percentage of the fish that are out there that can eat hemp and it's definitely eating corn at the moment and if there's quite a few of them out there they'll soon get through that bait we've had the first bit of a disaster of the session had the waggler completely break the two gram waggler and come back with just a weight so i've put a 1.25 gram one on it's the last float in the box of that type now the beauty of that is at the start when we had the two gram waggler we didn't go too far so these fish are well within range that's what i mean in the last blog about just drawing them closer and closer to you we had a bit of a disaster with the float but we're well capable of getting to where we've been feeding and if you're a long-term watcher of the blog then you'll know great to have them back so problem number two is sat behind me and of all the days for the gopro to mess up today was one when i didn't need it to but if you guys have watched the channel for a long time you know it is just real fishing raw as it is it's the channel started it's never really changed and it's just one man who goes to work all week has a family two kids and goes fishing at the weekend and there's some real quality now starting to arrive in the swim you know they're all of that size and be a really nice net at the end when we come and look at it the missus just rang and asked how the weather was told her it was a bit clammy <laughs> it's a bad one either for me and this ever-changing wind is making it really interesting today like on the river where it's constantly changing you know ebbing and flowing this wind's going that way then it'll blow off your back and it'll come towards you and it just keeps you thinking all the time you know you're constantly thinking about how you're feeding how far out you're feeding and your presentation when the wind's right and blowing away from me taking full advantage of being able to cast that little bit further. Just going off the back of that feed, you always get the better quality ones hanging about and it buries instantly. Just making the most of the conditions. When that wind's blowing off my back, get that bit further out. And as you can see on screen now, as the session's gone on, 
an altogether different class of roach has turned up in the swim and as we're going on and putting more bait in and building the swim then roach just keep on coming. If there's ever a roach to finish on that's the one. Just coming up to midday now and time to call it a day. We'll have a look at that final net. I really really have enjoyed this morning and that's a clonker to end on. So the session comes to an end there now and as you can see on screen an amazing day's fishing with a lovely net of quality roach. Looking off the venue as you can see looks absolutely beautiful. All that remains is to wish us all tight lines in your own fishing. If you have enjoyed the video please leave it a like and subscribe and I'll catch us all next week. Tight lines. <laughs>